Hello there and welcome to another episode of Lindsay's Lounge and again we thank Globe for making this segment on pridetv.com.au possible. Um, today I have the absolute pleasure of sitting on my lounge with the fabulous Sally Goldner. If you haven't heard of Sally recently, you must have been hiding under a rock because Sally, honestly congratulations, you've just been awarded a human rights Act activist, do we say, or Human Rights Award? Well, it's an award for Transgender Victoria, as per, in my best sort of Bert Newton voice, look, it's a Logie. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Patty as well, you know, that sort of thing. But it is quite amazing. It is a 2014 Community Organisation Award for Transgender Victoria. So it is just, yeah, it's, you know, slowly sinking in that we've got this huge, um, highly, you know, a revered award is yeah. quite amazing. Absolutely, because you know, up, transgender at the moment is an issue that is in the foreground mm. at the moment. People are becoming more aware. How did you, how did you actually reach this point? I think there's been a few things that have got the trans community or trans and gender diverse movement, if we like, worldwide there. Um, obviously, like a lot of things, internet and social media has played a huge part. It just seems like such a far away time from the late 90s where we have to have a proverbial phone tree to get to contact <laughs> the committee and of course then everyone got onto email. But now in this day and age, you know, the internet, social media, it's a you know, very, very different thing. So I think that's been a huge thing at two levels. One, in terms of the advocacy level, but also the connectedness it can give to people you know, just beginning to come to the point of realisation, read their gender identity at the social and support level. So that's one aspect. The second has been the people who stood up, you know, many moons ago, I mean, say from Australia, starting with Carlotta, that great special that was on this year. Absolutely. That was just so fantastic. And, I mean, there was one, one bit that I loved, which was where Carlotta and friend went before the judge and Carlotta goes, well, you're up there in your wig and gown. What's the difference, difference. to our house? Absolutely, yeah. And I'm just sitting there going, yeah, hashtag early trans advocacy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just brilliant. So I think people like Carlotta and those who stood up a lot earlier mm. and coming forward a bit more, Julie Peters in the 90s yeah. um, in Victoria, deserve a lot of credit for doing the really, really hard yards and really anyone who tried to be, we'll say, out mm. in those times. Wow. And I think the third thing is just plain persistence, you know. Um, I think that's that saying attributed to US President Calvin Coolidge, press on has always solved the problems of the human race. People pushed and pushed and kept throwing their shoulder at the door and sure we got a few bruises, but now people just open the door mm. and it's vastly different. And so I think there's been just those factors of persistence and courage. And, and you just said bruises, you know, which mm. are probably a very soft terminology mm -hmm. for yeah. I'd say what a lot of you people have been through and, and especially when you are you know trying to get recognition there must have been times when you know in essence you thought oh what am I doing you know I'm exhausted you know are, are we really moving forward oh look agreed and in Victoria in particular there was a really bad period from about Oh, 2002 to four, where there just seemed to be a whole heap of infighting, and cynics would say, "Gee, infighting in one of the GLBTI <laughs> communities." Oh no, you don't have that. We, no, no, it was, no. A, it, was what, it was just an aberration. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, it just got really bad, and personally, that's where I nearly just walked. Um, yeah. It was re it just seemed to be infight after infight. We we lost a chance to get really good world-beating legislation on one aspect, in my opinion, because of it. And it was disheartening. And what turned it around was the people who began to come through uni student level who were far more trans supportive than previous people at that level had been. And if it hadn't have been for seeing, well, okay, there's a, a shift beginning there, I, I might well have walked, don't mm. know. But um, glad I didn't and glad we persisted. And you know, now, the last two and a half years or so, um, like worldwide, but certainly in Australia, and I think... For Australia, the things that I kept coming back to are those two campaigns, Beyond Blue and No to Homophobia. Mm. People suddenly realised, oh, we didn't know that. Now they knew that they didn't know. And the interest in trans issues and the deeper interest in gay and lesbian and you know, the thing that we've still got to cover, I think, bisexual and intersex issues. Mm. Um, but people are beginning to ask more questions and just do it in a different way. And I think so. 
maybe that's where it's been in the last couple of years as well. It, ha it has. It's been an amazing growth period, and and you noticed on on social media, you know, people like Buck Angel mm. that are just out there, and that's that's one of the things too. We seem to um, have brought to the foreground the female to male transgender issues as well, and um, and I was talking to somebody actually who's transitioning not so long back. And he said that one of the things you realise when you're transitioning from um, female to male is that the rite of passage of males, like people actually mm. get out of the way for you. Whereas if I can ask the question, you may have noticed a little bit different as you were transitioning that your where you actually stood just walking down the street would have changed. Walking down the street, lots of things. And I mean, it sounds embarrassingly naive, but one doesn't realise how much sexism and anti-female prejudice there is in the world yeah, until yeah. one goes down this path. Yeah. And particular, I mean, I mean, there's so many, also, I'm going to deliberately use the word masculine dominated fields, mm. but for someone like myself who originally worked in accounting, which I, despite whatever the numbers are, is mm. still incredibly masculine dominated and probably to a point where I'm so much happier about all of my gender identity, but I've had to move out of it. Mm. There's the the, heap, the treasurers on boards who really don't have a clue yet dominate me because they think because they're a male they have to, and you try to stand up and they just keep talking over you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it is a it is a really sad thing, and it's something personally that I've been thinking a lot about over the last six months. How much masculinity really, and I, it's that's pro it may not be the best word, but let's not split too many hairs. Mm. How much that misuse of that power invades our life that people just think they can talk over people or shout over people, and it's that sort of power misuse that I think we need to keep exploring if we're looking at all aspects of gender identity and gender expression. You get no argument from me there. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> be, being a woman and and, um, and even in our own community, you know, you find that you know sometimes I should just shudder at what men think they can say and get yeah. away with. And I, I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems to be that younger generation that, you know, of, of males out there, that it is their just right of passage to say whatever they want to. It's an interesting shift. Um, I, I, I feel like there's a bit of a split. I, I feel like there's some shift in awareness, but it's a polarisation, if you like. There isn't, maybe there's less of a middle ground yeah. where um, we've got the really extreme anti-female types at one end. And I mean, you know, the really extreme and going really, really extreme, you know, we had that horrible Julian Blanc stuff out here a couple of months ago. Mm. But at the other end, I do feel there's a lot of males who are saying, well, okay, I'm going to get past those sort of, I'll say, Tarzan type of issues yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, just be a respectful human being with, you know, and I'm being very binary in my thinking here, masculine and feminine balance. But I think the other thing to go, you know, beyond the, the trans men stuff is the increase in not people identifying other than binary. And we just had some research released in September on trans and gender diverse young people in Australia, 33% are identifying as other than male or female. So that's really shifting as well. And that's a good sign. Yeah. People are feeling confident to be their exact put dot on the kaleidoscope. And that's a really good thing. But, and um, I, and that, I've noticed too, yeah, and there's been a shift in parenting as well. You know, mm. I was at my local, um, I suppose, mall the other day and um, last week, and there was a little boy. I didn't identify him as a little boy, and he had a little tutu on. And, you know, I'm chatting away to him and his mother. You know, he was showing me a doll that he had, and he had a um, like a truck or something as well. And... And I know I'm chatting away this little boy because he's just started, or little girl, because he's just started chatting to her. And his mother said, oh, look, he's actually a little boy. And I said, I never picked up on that. And she was like a sigh of relief, you know, from her. But I've noticed, and, you know, we had quite a, a good chat, but I've noticed that, that parenting even is changing. Mm. The, like the awareness of parents with, with their, their transgender or, or children that are having difficulty identifying. Yeah, definitely the parents shifting, definitely an overall shift. You know, that's a fantastic story that it, there's someone just walking down a shopping mall, mm. not, you know, I mean, if game media, we had that fantastic Four Corners special yeah, recently, yeah. which was great. But other things, I had the privilege earlier this year of going along with other speakers to a um, holiday camp of 100 young, well, I'll say old women, 
Mm. But the previous year at the camp, someone had come out as a trans man and everyone agreed they could transition on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that's a remarkable achievement yeah. that um, we've got to that point. And also after a, a talk I did recently, a couple of, I'll say, older women came up and said that they, they, their husbands and one of their fathers had seen the Four Corners special and they were, in a nice way, whatevs about it, they understood it. And so if we're getting some degree of understanding of gender identity and expression from a range of generations, that just seems so far removed from even five years ago. Absolutely. And loving it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because I think that, you know, and I think what the human race is starting to understand, or, you know, certain people out there, mm. is that sexuality, gender, is fluid. Yes. You know, it, it's not about your genitalia, it, it's, not a, it's, it's about your emotions, it's about the way you think, it's about the way you perceive yourself. And, you know, now to have that open for people, and there to be so many groups like yours where, you, where these people can connect, mm. you know, it's bloody marvellous. Oh, look, it's a, really, it's a really good thing that we have all the groups, as you say. Mm. That's quite amazing. And, um, you know, I look now in Victoria, or at least in Melbourne, mm. um, there's groups based in Melbourne that I think cover what might be called most of the kaleidoscope. So we've got... Transgender Victoria doing advocacy, but we've got groups like the Long Running Seahorse, mm. we've got FTM Shared, we've got Gender Queer Australia, and then for families there's groups like Transcend and Trans Family even, and they've been gaps, possibly about the only gap that we don't have that's expressly named, although Trans Family covers everyone who's supported, probably a partner's support group or discussion group would be a, a good addition as well. So yeah, there's that huge spectrum of coverage. There's a lot more visibility. People are feeling safe, which is great. Good. Yeah, that that's a, a bigger issue actually, safety. So so when you actually got this, you must have sort of breathed some sigh of relief that you know we've achieved at least one goal of, of recognition. Mm. It was quite an amazing thing when um, you know we got the the word we were nominated as one of the four finalists in our category of, out of about I think 48 people who applied to for the award or 48 organizations to be precise mm. that was amazing in itself because I look at the other three finalists two dealing with refugee issues one dealing with female genital mutilation which to me they sort of seem like all visible or prominent issues of course all every human rights issue is equally important but to be honest, I did feel a bit overawed. Yeah. And then the night that that was announced, I just, um, gosh, I still think back to it. You know, I'm, I'm standing near the near the front. Um, you know, and they're reading it out, and they said, and, you know, the commissioner said it's transgender Victoria. And it took two to three seconds before, but while more my mind's going, no, this he didn't just say that. It was still a sense of what we won, <laughs> and then it sunk in. Yeah. And I, it's just so pleasing to see that because I think it will give a lot of hope to trans people that we are considered just as much a part of the human rights landscape as those more visible issues and all the other ones like race and sexism and all that sort of thing. We're in there. And if people know that, you know, yes, we're being taken seriously, people are trying to work through our issues like birth certificate reforms or whatever mm -hmm. it is, it gives a bit of hope and that can make a big difference to a lot of people. Absolutely. Well, we're going to stop for a short break. So, so I guess as we say in the, in the classics, this is the end of part one, Sally, and we'll be back very shortly for part two.